Hi, this is Dennis Surgeon. I'd like to welcome you to Design Team Fundamentals. This slideshow is about how the design team model of a networked team of teams makes for more effective results. The knowledge that's necessary to practice as a member of a design team requires that we understand continual improvement and quality and innovation and the ways that it works is sometimes counter to what we've been taught. Much of what has been called management science in the last decades is neither management nor science, it's just plain wrong. And we're going to teach you what's right and how to verify that it's right. This is about the choices we're going to be making and how to think differently about the choices in front of us. It's mainly about how to be part of a design team for improving our processes and not panic if we consider being a vital leader in one. So why do we use the design team model? It's because linking design team member thinking to the charter and to the dialogue and decisions happens in a network of organizational goals. It's a way to align multiple goals, decisions, and actions by design teams. And with practice, it speeds decision-making and action. Action leads to improvement in learning and it builds a sense of purpose and trust between design team members and with the guiding sponsors. Interdependent teams are the point, not independent. It's important for design team success to pay attention to the basic team characteristics. And if one or more of these are missing, the self-managed team will not be able to improve performance. It requires a meaningful shared purpose it requires specific goals, complementary skills of the different design team members. The size of the team can be quite important and we'll discuss that later, along with a clear working approach and mutual responsibility. Design team members help remove the organizational structures that get in the way of improvement and lock us into the status quo. Members of design teams are agents of change their transition and transformation in this specialized role is what helps them work inside the process. One of the reasons that design team members should be especially close to the customer. Every member of the design team has to become a change agent and then become skilled at transformation of themselves and their work. And in the process, they become leaders. This model starts with a guiding or core council that's chartered by executive sponsors to lead a system-wide initiative. This core council is responsible to lead and manage the initiative, to manage the network of interactions, to define purpose, and to build trust among the various initiative subteams, which is what a design team is. The differences in design teams go to these five critical roles. We ask for people to join design teams that are capable of leadership. We want people to join these design teams who are willing to make a difference in their work for the benefit of their customers. And there are five distinct roles we're gonna talk briefly about in this segment and in further segments. And these five very distinct roles are not the only roles that team members fulfill, but they are the five most critical roles for reasons that you'll soon understand. Eventually, everybody should rotate through these roles in order to understand better the work of the design team. Input to design team work starts with learning CQI methods. Continual quality improvement is the foundation of this work. Design team methods are also critical to this work and the functions that are necessary for improvement as part of a team. We use the aim and purpose that comes in the charter. The team is permitted with approval of the guiding council or the executive sponsors to change their charter, but it's really important to keep the scope from creeping into some other areas that are not part of the intentions of the executive sponsors and the guiding council. We start also with input from the value stream map. Now many subject matter experts are not capable of understanding how to operate as a design team, 
those who are subject matter experts, who are capable, who are willing to learn, can become very useful members of design teams. But frequently design teams start with a value stream map that's created by subject matter experts that are not on the design team. It's important also for the design team to learn how to use spread methods. This spread method is something that you'll learn more about, but it includes gathering customer and stakeholder feedback before you spread initiatives across a whole system. And it's also important to start with a glossary of operational definitions that come from the system that is being improved and the team has an opportunity at a later stage to provide new operational definitions for the system. Design team processes, including setting a scheduling, a regular meeting cadence. Again, weekly is a minimum. Design teams do not have to meet for a whole day, but they should meet for at least one hour a week to sync up and leave the rest of the hours in that one day a week model to do the work of the design team, the tasks that have to be done in addition to the getting together as a team. It's important for teams to set a purpose agenda and limit for every meeting, to complete their charter, to run PDSA cycles each week, to deliver evidence of the improvement through those PDSA cycles, they use the get a grip method, we'll cover more later. And the get a grip method is a way to reach consensus on the team about the aim, about the goals, the roles and responsibilities, the interpersonal relationships, as well as the processes. It's an opportunity to learn how to resolve conflicts and solve problems. Sometimes the conflicts and problems can't be solved at a design team and they need to talk to the guiding or core council and they need to report their progress to that guiding council weekly at minimum at the stand and deliver sessions. The output from design teams include data that's updated in the value stream map. Frequently subject matter experts don't have the data that makes the value stream map reflect the values of the process. So it's important to get actual data to replace estimates and to begin to develop an action item and decision log, to write plan, do, study, act, cycle, template forms, to share the evidence of what they've learned and what they've improved, to create control charts and stand and deliver updates. They use guiding counsel, feedback, and coaching. It's really critical that the team be set up to not know everything, but to learn everything that's important for the improvement that they wanna make. And sometimes that will involve experts in design team work from the guiding council. It's also important to think about output being operational definitions and measurable improvements of the process that they're chartered to improve. We've already talked about the weekly stand and deliver cadence. Communications within the design team is always expected to take place in real time as much as possible. And if there are occasions where something is really critical for the work of the guiding council, it's expected that there not ever be a secret waiting for a week to be shared with the guiding council. There should never be secrets between any design teams and the guiding council or between the members of designing teams and each other. Information should always be shared on a need to know basis by the communications members of the design teams. And a definition of what's need to know is if there's an impact to the system or the process or its performance or to any of the stakeholders, it's necessary to communicate that impact as soon as possible. It's not a need to know about the Las Vegas goings on, uh, the gossip, the not focused on solving a situation or an issue. If it's not your business to resolve, if it's not your role on the team to communicate, you should keep that communications to the role that's specified to keep the communications with the guiding council and with the sponsors 
in the context of this work. We also set a cadence of weekly updates to the council and monthly updates to the sponsors as a way to keep everybody informed at the level they would like to be informed. We have several other installments in this topic. I appreciate your interest. Please feel free to call me or write me. We'd love to hear from you if you have questions and need further help with design teams. Thank you.